Oh my God. Nightmare blunt rotation. Oh, oh my God. Who's the fourth person? Satan? What's going on? What a roster. I'm saying it. And finally, new rules stop around. The issue with President Biden isn't if, it's who. Who will replace him because he is not going to be the Democrats' candidate for president in 2024, all due respect. <laughs> Above any matters of politics or what's right or wrong, the one thing I know for sure about America... Oh, man, they lost Bill Maher. <laughs> it's Jover, dude. They lost Bill Maher. Folks, the Democratic Party has fallen, okay? I hate to see, I hate to see myself in agreement with one of my, one of my mortal enemies, okay? Like, I, I have so much smoke for this piece of shit. I hate him so much that I hate him almost as much as I hate Ben Shapiro, okay? Like, I, the amount of resentment and anger I have in my heart for this person why he is the most smug arrogant like he is basically functionally a boomer who's a little bit younger than a boomer with a television show and a and a media presence he's so smarmy so pompous so arrogant demonstrates exactly the things that i despise about the the entitlement that like liberal elites feel in their hearts like they that he is just as stupid as the average republican in so many ways okay oh he is a boomer okay there you go he is you hate his demeanor more than his politics let me find out no 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 i hate his politics too he is a conservative liberal i definitely hate his politics okay he's a conservative liberal he's very racist he's unimaginably islamophobic He's also incredibly hypocritical about the way that he analyzes religion. He's always like, uh, I just hate religion. Uh, but also Israel has a right to defend itself and also be a religious theocracy. Huh. Muslims, though, those are the barbarian sand monkeys. Uh, huh. But of course, um, Israel, I'm Israel. Hi. Like, that's him. Okay. I just, I despise him. I despise him. Uh, he, everything he represents is just like, I, I hate. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. He is such a smarmy piece of shit. <sighs> okay. What was I going to say? Oh, his demeanor. I despise his attitude. I despise his ideology. I despise. He is just the absolutely the most annoying, most like, yeah, he's like a Reddit atheist, but in the, but, but beefed up. So Having said all of this, seems like he also sees the writing on the wall. Okay. Is this his humor? He has no humor. What are you talking about? He's the least funny comedian on the planet. It's run by mean girls. <laughs> mean girls in the press and in politics and in life. And when they smell blood in the water, the lust to finish off a vulnerable person will never be denied. <laughs> Biden is toast. The walls will keep crumbling. And my pick in the office pool for when he gives it up is August 9th, the 50th anniversary of when Nixon did, for, of course, very different reasons. Yes, replacing a president as his party's candidate this late will seem like a big deal for about three days. <laughs> and then we'll all be over it. It'll be like when a coworker gets her tits done. I mean, that, okay, that's actually not only a good joke, but also absolutely correct. I hate that. Oh, my God. Ben Shapiro's on the panel. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is literally like the, the Avengers of all the smug elitist pieces of shit. Oh, my God. Jump scare. What is happening? I hate this. I hate that I agree with him on this, and he's right. And that's not even a bad joke. Yeah. At, at first, it's, oh, my God. And a week later, they're just her tits. <laughs> America is going to do this. We're going to get new tits. <laughs> so let's start handicapping the candidates. 
I just want to be your guide here and tell you what the choices are. Kamala Harris, vice president, will get all of Biden's campaign money, and on the Democrats' best issue, abortion, she's a walking reminder to women that Republicans are coming for the abortion pill. She won't just protect Plan B. She is Plan B. <laughs> oh, my God. Nightmare blunt rotation. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, he did it. Oh, my God. Who's the fourth person? Satan? What's going on? What a roster. Like, like at least it's not Richie Torres, okay? Bakari Sellers, very annoying. Uh, at least it's not Richie Torres. Like, he could have get it could have been worse. <laughs> and as a former prosecutor, Kamala was putting criminals in jail back before liberals decided that was a bad thing. <laughs> And now that CVS is locking the shaving cream behind plexiglass, Democrats are coming around to her again. <laughs> Harris would be the first woman president, first black woman president, and first Asian president. But I don't vote for who will be the first. I vote for who will win. And for whatever reason, Harris has never been popular. You can count the number of delegates she won in the 2020 primaries on one hand, as long as that hand has no fingers. <laughs> I legitimately it's not even a joke like I, I think that's a benefit I'm not even kidding like she is in so many ways a generic ass democrat and I think right now a younger generic ass democrat is what will truly change the the outcome of this election you have the capacity to captivate a shit ton of voting blocks with one quick switch. The people that are Biden dead enders are going to vote for whoever the fuck is the president, especially if that person is the vice president, right? <sighs> Establishment versus populist is risky. I don't think so because I don't think Donald Trump is as populist as you think he is. He was literally the president and people remember how shitty it was. Americans have amnesia for sure. But Donald Trump will remind them very quickly. Donald Trump will remind them very quickly because Donald Trump's populism turned into chaos for a lot of people, for a lot of voters. And that's why they voted him out. Now, because we have a lot of amnesia collectively when it comes to, you know, thinking about things that happened four years in the past, it matters who the top of the ticket is because Donald Trump will remind people of the past four years, or not the past four years, the past eight years, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? That is the reason why originally the Democrats made the idiotic choice, the, the campaign made the idiotic choice that it made, which was to turn around and have Joe Biden present his case in front of uh, the entire, uh, tele uh, entire public that was watching the debate. They did the debate early. The goal was Biden is dynamic. He's alive. He can prove that he's alive. And then, and then ultimately, ultimately, the opposition will look crazy and light their own campaign on fire. Problem is, Biden is not alive and he couldn't prove it. In three years as vice president, she's been quieter than an electric car. <laughs> and and like an electric car, your MAGA uncle can't explain why she fills him with homicidal rage. <laughs> she just does. Sometimes life isn't fair. It's not fair that she's not popular. She's intelligent and accomplished. And in fact, was put in charge of the border. And look at how... Okay, bad example. <laughs> I, do, I do hate that. Like, this is why... This is another reason why. Like, look, th this is why I hate him. Like, he is just such a right-wing shithead, dude. How can you not hate this mother? Oh, man, the border is out of control. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bitch. Oh, crime is out of control. Border is out of control. Both, both are just right-wing panics, okay? Right-wing hysteria. Right-wing hysteria that this dumb f is leaning into 
not realizing that if he was a real one, if he was genuinely interested in the continuation of the Democratic Party's legacy or the continuation of the Democratic Party's like electoral chances, electoral victory, then he wouldn't be leaning into this right-wing nonsense. But because he's such an old dumbass and a reactionary himself, he can't comprehend. He cannot comprehend that these are all right-wing panics that have dominated the discourse and he's leaning into it and making it worse. Debating my conservative family is impossible on the border because they just make shit up and there's no way to counter because they just won't believe you. Yeah, it's the same with crime. It's the same with crime. There is nothing you can do. It feels so helpless, okay? He's just telling the truth. See, there's still people in here. Ask them for evidence. You can't. It doesn't matter. Their evidence is made up hysteria. It's made up and it's panic and it's hysteria. That's it. Oh, they're, they're coming over the border to do crimes. That is an insane assertion. That is an insane thing to say. Not only is crime lower, okay, it's trending lower as it has been, except for that brief blip post-COVID. And also on top of that, he, what he's just stating facts, no, it's not about the border. It's about how incompetent and invisible she is. It's not lol, you are clueless, what he's just stating facts. What's the fact? What's the fact about immigration? Immigrants are coming over the border seeking refugee. I mean, refugees are coming over the border seeking asylum. It is legal for them to do so, okay? Not only is it legal, of course, I consider it to be immoral to deny them entry into the country. But what do you think is happening there, okay? What do you think is going on? Do you think they're coming over the border with ill intent to go to come in here and do crimes? Do you think they're invading the country? Or do you think these are people just like you, just like your family, just like your friends who have hopes, dreams, and just simply want to survive? And they're coming and, and exercising their legal right to seek asylum with the hopes that they can inevitably get processed and start becoming active, productive members of American society, the American workforce, just like our families, except not breaking the law. That's a great take, but it's pure copium. Why do we have laws then? Laws change. If you knew anything about the history of immigration, you would know that those laws have changed specifically so that there is a group of people that we can consistently use as basically slave labor. Also, these guys are not actually violating the law. This is very important for you to understand. They are not breaking the law, okay? They are not breaking the law anyway. These are asylum seekers. It is legal for them to come to the United States of America, step foot inside of the border, and legally seek asylum. So it's not even a matter of the law, even though laws can change, okay? And sometimes bad laws do change after people fight to change them. Chattel slavery was legal. Killing Jews and sending them to concentration camps in Nazi Germany was legal. Ironic because the Bracero program is exactly what the Nazis tailored the, the camps off of as well. They, got, they drew a lot of inspiration from the, the methods that the American government used at the time when the American government was shipping in Mexicans into the United States of America to beef up agricultural production to beef up agricultural output only to put them in uh camps and and spray them you have to be extra racist to make a sock account to try and debate immigration yeah and it's really funny how much this discourse has changed i don't really know i don't normally do this but i think it's in it's good to hear how far right we yes, my name is david grossberg and i have be how far right this country has become on the issue of immigration here is George H.W. Bush and Ronald Reagan debating on immigration in 1980. Okay? This is the Republican primary. These are both Republican. These are both Republican presidential candidates. Okay? Let's take a look. Yes, my name is David Grossberg, and I'd like to know, do you think the children of illegal aliens should be allowed to attend Texas public schools free, or do you think that their parents should pay for their education? Who are you addressing that to? I think you're first in this. Uh... He was looking right at you. <laughs> I said he was. <laughs> Look, I'd like to see something done about the illegal alien problem that would be so sensitive and so understanding about labor needs and human needs that that problem wouldn't come up. But today, if those people are here, uh, I would reluctantly say I think they would 
they would get whatever it is that they're, you know, what the society is giving to their neighbors. But it has, the problem has to be solved. The problem has to be solved because with, as we have kind of made illegal some kinds of labor that I'd like to see legal, we're doing two things. We're creating a whole society of really honorable, decent, family-loving people that are in violation of the law, and secondly, we're exacerbating relations with Mexico. The, cha the, the answer to your question is much more fundamental than whether they attend Houston schools, it seems to me. I don't want to see a whole, if they're living here, I don't want to see a whole, I think it's six and eight-year-old kids being made, you know, one totally uneducated and made to feel that they're living with outside the law. Let's address ourselves to the fundamentals. These are good people, strong people. Part of my family is a Mexican. Like this is this is to the left of Joseph Robinette Biden's position in 2024. Okay? Do you understand? The Democrat in 2024, the Democratic Party, which ironically he ran for president after this uh, cycle, Joe Biden did. True, the, the situation in 1980 is the exact same in 2024. Brilliant take. It is. Amer the American population has grown, right? And the share of immigrants that are trying to come into the country to legally seek as asylum has grown as well. Unless you think that the undocumented migrants now are somehow more like violent than they were back then, okay? And that they're doing more crimes or something, which, by the way, there is no empirical evidence for. There's only actual data that shows the exact opposite of that reality, a reality that Republicans have basically made reality by just lying about it over and over again. OK, but something that you need to understand here, something that you need to understand here is that the situation in 1980s is not that different from 2024 at all, at all. America has always relied on a steady flow at all. No, actually. Let's continue. I, add to that, I think the time has come that the United States and our neighbors, particularly our neighbor to the South, should have a better understanding and a better relationship than we've ever had. And I think that we haven't been sensitive enough to our size and our power. They have a problem of 40 to 50 percent unemployment. Now, this cannot continue without the possibility arising with regard to that other country that we talked about, of Cuba and what it is stirring up, of the possibility of trouble below the border and we could have a very hostile and strange neighbor on our border. Rather than making them or talking about putting up a fence, why don't we work out some recognition of our mutual problems, make it possible for them to come here legally with a work permit, and then while they're working and earning here, they pay taxes here. And when they go The irony of this is that this ultimately was an inherently exploitative way to take advantage of a steady flow of migrant workers that come into the country. And we've moved even further beyond this at level of exploitation. We rely, we rely, like they do this in Europe. They do this with Polish people in Europe. They did this with Turkish migrant workers in Germany. Like many Western liberal countries already rely on a two tier labor system, right? Where they actually process all of the people that are coming in, give them paperwork, and take advantage of the the material conditions of their host uh, of their home countries, and take advantage of the currency exchange in an effort to drive down wages for the entire population, for the entire population, and take advantage of of a, a group of migrant workers that they can exploit more than the average American worker, the average documented uh, worker of whatever the host nation is. Having said that, however, having, having said that, okay, the craziest part about it is that America was like, no, nah, f*** that. We should just keep them illegal. That way we can exploit them even more. Do you understand how insane that is? I want to go back. They can go back and they can cross and open the border both ways by understanding their problems. This is the only safety valve right now they have with that unemployment that probably keeps the lid from blowing off down there. And I think we could have a friend, a fine relationship, and it would solve the problem you mentioned also. Yeah. Here's uh, Ronald Reagan speaking about, in 1986, um, uh, signing a Ceremony for Immigration Reform and Control Act in the Roosevelt Room, talking about amnesty. As you guys know, this is one of the biggest pieces of shit in American history. One of the worst. One of the worst. American presidents of all time. 
Okay. He's up there with George W. Bush. He's up there uh, personally. He brought about the accelerated neoliberal era that caused Twitch Primes to be $6 instead of 5 or Twitch uh, subscriptions to be $6 instead of 5 at the top of the hour, caused the ad breaks to be 3 minutes instead of 1, okay? He is responsible for pretty much every inequality that Americans face, every inequality that Americans see. He is responsible for all of the bad and none of the good, okay? 1980s when worker productivity stopped being tied to wages and wage growth stopped. Cody just posted this video on Reagan. Everything bad is Ronald Reagan's fault. Oh, I love this. Okay, we can watch this. Damn. Anyway, at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. I'm going to run that right now, and we're going to continue. But here, this is what he had to say about amnesty. Tuesday's election, and I want to congratulate all of you in the House of Representatives who have just been re-elected. This bill, the Immigration Reform and Control Act of 1986 that I'll sign in a few minutes, is the most comprehensive reform of our immigration laws since 1952. It's the product of one of the longest and most difficult legislative undertakings in the last three Congresses. Further... God, they're all so old. Brother, there are a lot of similarities with this Ronald Reagan especially. There are a lot of similarities with this Ronald Reagan and our current sitting president. And by that, I mean their brains. Ronald Reagan at this point, I believe, was in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. If not, yeah, he... Leisha Miller has shorts that say Reagan ruined everything. Yes. Ronald Reagan in the United States of America and Margaret Thatcher in the UK is responsible for, is perhaps most singularly responsible for the fall of Western civilization. Okay. Not that I give a shit about that sort of thing, but yes, absolutely. When you think about like material conditions worsening, when you think about uh, gross inequality, the wealth disparity, Okay, these two brought about the absolute worst change in the Western world. It's an excellent example of a truly successful bipartisan effort. The administration and the allies of immigration reform on both sides of the Capitol and both sides of the aisle work together to accomplish these critically important reforms to control illegal immigration. In 1981, this administration asked the Congress to pass a comprehensive legislative package, including employer sanctions, other measures to increase enforcement of the immigration laws, and legalization. The act provides these three essential components. Distance has not discouraged illegal immigration to the United States from all around the globe. The problem of illegal immigration should not, therefore, be seen as a problem between the United States and its neighbors. Our objective is only to establish a reasonable, fair, orderly, and secure system of immigration into this country and not to discriminate in any way against particular nations or people. I would like to recognize a few of the public servants whose unflagging efforts have made this legislation a reality. Senator Alan Simpson, Congressman Dan Lundgren, Chairman Peter Rodino, Congressman Ron Mazzoli, have long pursued and now have attained this landmark legislation. Important roles were played by Senator Strom Thurmond, Senator Paul Simon. Con Strom Thurmond, another another Brandon, another Brandon uh, Bestie, also a rugged segregationist. That's right. Back then, they still had literal out and about segregationists. God, American politics is so busted. Is crazy. It's actually wild to think about. Like, sure, this is 1986, okay? Five years before I was born, America still had segregationists in office running rampant, dude. Isn't that crazy? Straw my filibuster, the 1958 Civil Rights Act for 25 hours straight, Thurman. Yeah, back then they actually made these motherfuckers stand too. That's the worst part. We don't even do that anymore. The threat of a filibuster alone is enough. For a no bill to pass, I hate this shit. <laughs> they need to, they need to make, they need to literally force people. They need to force people to stand up, for, stand on business. Congressman Ham Fish, Bill McCollum, Chuck Schumer, and many others in both houses of the Congress and in both parties. Additionally, I would like to note the excellent efforts of members of my administration. 
who have worked so hard over the last six years to make this bill signing possible today. The long, <coughs> long list of those in the executive branches, headed by Attorneys General Edwin Meese and William French Smith, who, with Immigration Commissioner Alan C. Nelson, have contributed greatly to our efforts to pass meaningful immigration reform. Future generations of Americans will be thankful for our efforts to humanely regain control of our borders and thereby preserve the value of one of the most sacred possessions of our people, American. Yeah, people forget that, like, Reagan and Nixon are Californian. California used to be red. <laughs> citizenship. So now I'll get on with the signing and make this into law. Hope nothing happens to me between here and the table. <laughs> man back when california was a good place yeah dude totally so much better uh trump supporters losing the sun medical emergencies left and right at the trump rally here in butler county pa they've offered no shaded areas in the audience and small pals of bottled water aren't sufficient several calls for medic 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 amid the crowd we're here for cbs evening news that's awesome reagan's movies on north korea were kind of funny we're not doing that okay Anyway, let's get back to this dickhead. I can't believe we just strayed away so far because we talked about immigration. I just wanted to show you guys like how different things used to be in, in terms of like looking at immigration is not like a, a, a roving gang of barbaric monsters that are invading the country. Military aged males was not the conversation being had. Attitudes change. Attitudes change throughout time, okay? We have the capacity to, to push for progressive messaging on issues that can only be normalized through progressive legislation on the matter, or we obviously can allow the ratchet effect to take place and become more and more and more reactionary. Gavin Newsom is the governor of California, home to 12% of all Americans and 50% of all Mexicans. <laughs> On the upside, Newsom is the only governor, with the possible exception of Christy Noem, who looks like they could do porn. <laughs> And at Weird six foot joke. three and 215 pounds, he's actually the height and weight Trump claims to be. <laughs> I don't want to say... <laughs> I don't want to say he really, really wants to be the guy who steps in if the current nominee goes down, but he gets an alert on his phone every time Biden can't think of a word. <laughs> The downside is that governor of California is kind of like being conservator for Britney Spears. <laughs> That's also not true. That's literally the worst part about Gavin Newsom is that he is just a such a diehard neoliberal institutionalist piece of shit. And like he has the capacity to truly make game changing policies. Okay. Policies that the people democratically vote for by wider margins than him. I hate that. He will never, ever allow the democratic wishes of the Californian population, whether it be instituting some kind of socialized medicine, which he has vetoed uh, multiple on multiple occasions, or even tackling the homelessness issue by directly building new housing units, and, and using the massive amounts of budget surplus that we have in the state of California that is, in some instances, specifically accrued to deal with the, uh, with the housing problem, with the housing crisis. We'll attack him on California's homeless problem, but there's a response to that. The homeless can live anywhere, but they choose California. <laughs> 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 
Nine out of ten machete-wielding meth addicts say they wouldn't be unhoused anywhere else. <laughs> Of course, the knock on Gavin has always been that he's slick. Yeah, you know what? I'm okay with that. I notice slick is something no one has been accusing Biden of lately. <laughs> Do you want good at talking or don't you? <laughs> Newsom is the best communicator in the party with a history of standing up to bullies, and his name lends itself to the best slogan since I like Ike. I'm having Gavin. <laughs> Gretchen Whitmer is a very attractive choice. High-profile female governor who owns dogs but doesn't shoot them. <laughs> Facts. Polls show Whitmer would beat Trump in the must-win swing state she governs, Michigan, and she's a pragmatist who told the Detroit Free Press, I want to get shit done, and has, building up a string of victories on increasing wages, universal background checks, expanding health care, legalizing weed. By the way, this is the reason why I say, like, this is the word. He's, he's basically describing why I, I talk about Mama Gretch, Big Gretch, and why she would actually be pretty solid in comparison to all of the other uh, alternatives. Even <laughs> protecting abortion rights and gay rights. No wonder rednecks try. This is so funny that, like, <laughs> it is also so funny that... On that panel that I was on with Piers Morgan, the lady that is supposed to be like, the lady that like likes Ron DeSantis was trying to explain how she's actually a communist and bad for this reason. Most people from Michigan do not like her. You are objectively incorrect. What are you talking about? You are, that is just objectively untrue. No, she polls very well in Michigan. You're wrong. Tried to kidnap her. <laughs> Her biggest weakness is Medicare, uh, and I suspect it has something to do with her, you know, family. Uh, isn't her daughter like a big pharma executive or something? Or some shit like that. People in Michigan don't like her. I'm from Ohio, by the way. I don't know. From a personal vibe check, it seems no one likes her. Okay, got it. Her dad was the CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield. Oh, there you go. She'll never, she'll never, not her daughter. She's the daughter of a big pharma executive. Well, not a big pharma executive, but um, a insurance executive. And bonus points for this. Voters who don't yet know her will think she already was president because of all the TV shows where the president was played by an actress who looks just like Gretchen Whitmer. <laughs> Pete Buttigieg, wow, impressive, impressive, fought in Afghanistan, came in third among Democrats for the nomination in 2020, is a Rhodes Scholar, former mayor, and now he's the Secretary of Transportation, and Boo. he's only 10 years old. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> but unlike Biden, he's allowed to stay up past 8 p.m. <laughs> And he's perfect. <laughs> and he's perfect for the moment because as our transportation secretary, Pussy Pete, Angel says, I will lead the homophobic attacks against Pete. He has experience cleaning up train wrecks. <laughs> and he has the balls to go on Fox News, although it's no secret that he brings something that makes Fox conservatives very uncomfortable. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, you said it, sweetie. For our liberals, Pete checks the gay best friend box, and he's... <laughs> and he speaks eight languages, which is eight more than Trump. <laughs> and his worst scandal was taking too much time off when he had a baby. But if Trump brings that up, Pete can always say, I forget, where were you when Melania was home nursing Barron? <laughs> Okay, finally, there's this. 37% of our presidents were governors first. 
The Democratic Party has all these very capable, popular, progressive, but not stupid woke governors. Wes Moore, Andy Bashir, Josh Shapiro, Jared Polis, J.B. Pritzker, Tom Claymore. Ew. You can't, bro, you can't put J.B. Pritzker with Jared Polis. Jared Polis would literally, he, oh my God. He is somehow more of an annoying neoliberal than Pete Buttigieg. He is literally like, he is so gross, dude. He is like, Andy Bashar is fine. That's okay. But like, Polis himself is straight up. Like, that would be, that would be the one election where three people vote for the Democratic Party. Okay. He is so unimaginably awful. The vibes are unmatched. Do you not like him because he's Greek shaking my head? He is literally an active Redditor. This is true. He is like, he is the, he is, he behaves like the moderator of r slash neoliberal, the subreddit, like openly. And he plays league. Oh my God. I can't hate him even more than I do already. Okay. I made up Tom Claymore. <laughs> But that's because it's important to understand no one knows who these people are, and that's good. We need some new characters on this sitcom we call a country. Yeah. Americans like new, and these guys, all you need to know is they're moderates, they're under 100 years old, and they have a... <laughs> And they have a D next to their name. Sure, it would be fun and probably a winner if Michelle Obama ran, but she's off living her best life. We're not going to get a superstar. <laughs> We're not going to get a superstar in this draft. We're at the airport, and at this point, we just need to be sure we get the last rental car. You hate Rogan or Bill more? Oh, dude, Bill, what do you mean? At least, like, Ro Joe Rogan is a dummy and will openly recognize that he's a dummy. He calls himself an ape. Bill is just as stupid as Joe Rogan is, ironically, on issues like the vaccine, as a matter of fact, in the exact same way that Joe Rogan is a dumbass, except Bill has this entitled attitude that he's like, he has the smarmy liberalism down pat where he's basically like, I know more than you. Mm, you're a dumb Republican. You don't know anything. I'm an intellectual. And it's like, dude, you are just as stupid as all of these people that you shit on. Just as stupid. You're just smarmy as f Something reasonably safe, relatively clean, and not Trump. If there isn't a dead Girl Scout in the trunk, we're good to go. Anyway, 